Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out this video. If you're new here to the channel, my name is Michael Westbrook. I'm a full-time musician, uh, producer, just kind of music person. The demo that you heard at the beginning of this video was made using this thing, the Kemper Profiler. So I've been using Kempers for several years at this point, um, but I've actually never owned one. I've played on a tour for several years um, where we were using Kempers and I would have to dial them in on the road whenever I was out, um, as well as using them in church settings where they're kind of acting as the house amp. Kempers are super convenient and they sound great. I recently did a video where I compared the Kemper, the HX Stomp or the, you know, the Helix modeling and an actual amp, my Samson era matchless C30. You can find a link to that video up here. In that video, I kind of just talk about, you know, the head to head sound and the tone. Um, and I also say in that video that I do think the Kemper sounds slightly better than the Helix or the HX Stomp. Now, the HX Stomp is like a third or a quarter of the price of the Kemper. So I also talk about in that video where I think the HX Stomp is a huge value and that it makes a lot more sense for me. All that led me to think about, you know, was the Kemper worth it for me? It does sound a little better, but you know, I have a lot of great amps here in my home studio. I'm able to record direct using cab IRs and a two notes captor. So, you know, the volume isn't an issue in my small home studio. So how does the Kemper make sense for me? Do I need one? What are the benefits of the Kemper? I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this in the video. Um, as well, at the very end, we're gonna to listen to another demo that I made with some of the profiles that I created. I will tell you there's a link down in the description where you can find those profiles to buy. Not only does that give you some great sounding profiles, but it also helps support the channel. So if you're a Kemper user, please check those out and see if there's something that would be useful for you. On this channel in a previous video, I talked about how I love having my studio set up so that I'm ready to go, that I'm ready to hit record. This allows me to work quickly, efficiently, um, and just create more and more music, right? One way that I do this is that I almost always have an amp hooked up to my Two Notes captor um, running into Pro Tools. This allows me to turn on the amp, plug in, and hit record. Now, the downside to this is that, you know, I still have to tweak the tone, right? I still have to dial the amp in. I still have to find the right IRs that I like or that works for the tone that I'm working on. And, you know, there, there are a few more steps there. So it's not necessarily... Um, plug and play. It's not always just a flip of the switch and record. Especially with an amp like my Matchless, that amp does so much. There are so many different settings. There are so many different ways that that amp sounds amazing. Um, even though there aren't a lot of controls on it, um, they're very interactive and you know, you tweak the treble just a little bit and it kind of changes how the bass reacts. Um, and so you're constantly kind of tweaking it back and forth, trying to get it dialed into exactly where you want it. It's an amazing amp, but it's not always the easiest to dial in. So here's where the Kemper comes in for me. As I was making the demos for this video, I realized that the Kemper is kind of one of those plug and play solutions for recording. Now, granted, I made a lot of profiles of my Matchless. Um, I think overall, um, total with all the amps, I made 72 profiles. Um, and I think a majority of those are from the Matchless. But because of how I have those organized, I can easily find a setting and a type of sound that I want to um, and get started recording right away. <laughs> Also touch on another thing about the Kemper here, um, and that's something that I mentioned in my previous video as well. And that's that because the Kemper 
captures a snapshot of an amp at a specific setting, it's not always the most responsive to EQ changes and, and those types of things. Now, after making a bunch of profiles and spending a lot more time with the Kemper here in my home studio, um, I've kind of learned a little more about that. And I've learned that the Kemper has a lot of amazing settings and a lot of resources within um, that allow you to tweak the profiles to make them sound really great. There are settings like the pure cabinet um, that I really dug. As I turned that up, it seemed to kind of smooth out some of the rough edges, um, just to make it a little more musical sounding. I really loved messing with that setting on the profiles. All that being said, I still don't love the effects interface um, and just the overall interface of everything. I do really appreciate the Line 6 stuff for this reason. All of that stuff seems a lot more intuitive to me. I also looked up you know, how long the Kemper's been out. I think it was announced in 2011, if I remember correctly. So the Kemper's almost 10 years old. And that being said, it's still really impressive. Um, there's a lot of things that have come out since then. Um, and I still think the Kemper holds its own as compared to newer modeling technology. Now, it still doesn't dethrone the HX Stomp for my own personal uses in a live setting. I've shared previously before that I love that the HX Stomp is a great effects unit um, that can be used as a great sounding direct solution as well. When possible, I'm going to play amps live. Um, I love having my amps. I, had a, I have a lot of great amps. And so if I can use those, I'm going to use them. But the option of having the HX Stomp on my board and being able to run direct, say if I have a problem with an amplifier or I just can't use an amp in a certain setting, um, that's been a great option for me. The Kemper is a little tougher to put into my setup unless I'm just using it as a direct amp solution, um, as in like a direct replacement. And I'm just putting it back and plugging my pedal board into it, which I've done a lot and done for years at this point. So one thing I failed to mention here is the fact that you can't run stereo effects into the front of the Kemper. There are workarounds um, that require more cabling and whatnot. I haven't messed with that, um, but it's not super easy to set up that way. So in live situations where I'm using a Kemper as an amp replacement, I'm typically only able to run mono. To me, this is where you get into the discussion of using the Kemper as your full rig, either using a head, um, or the toaster model with a floorboard or using the Kemper stage. In those cases, you could program your effects using the onboard effects and run stereo. As I previously discussed, I don't love the effects interface. And so the idea of having to go through and program all my effects into the Kemper is not super attractive to me. Because of this, uh, more recently in scenarios where I've had the option to use a Kemper or just use my HX Stomp, I've used the HX Stomp because I can run stereo effects. Now that brings up a whole nother discussion of running mono versus stereo in a live setting um, and the pros and cons of that. Um, I'm not gonna get into that here. Uh, we'll save that for another video. So the big question to me is, is the Kemper still worth it? The technology is almost a decade old. You know, they range in price anywhere from what, like 15 to $2,000, depending on if you're buying new or used and which uh, model you're getting, maybe even more than that if you're getting a powered head or something like that. But, um, you know, is it still worth it? And I think in some ways it is. It's a great sounding piece of equipment and the flexibility to have a lot of great sounding amps and different profiles that can be, you know, tweaked is super helpful and super useful in the studio. I'm still a purist in some regards. I would rather have the actual amps and it's still tough for me to spend that much money on something that's not an amp. Unfortunately, like most technology, the value of the Kemper is going to go down over time. Um, I seriously doubt that in the next 10 years that you will be able to sell a Kemper for the same price as you can now. Whereas with tube amps, a lot of times those are going to go up in value, especially um, if they're vintage. I'm going to wrap it up here, but tell me what you think in the comments. Are you using a Kemper? Um, do you think it's still worth it now in 2020? What's kind of been your experience on uh, direct solutions? Are you using a Helix? Are you using a Kemper? Are you using an Axe FX? There's tons of options out there now. Stick around. We're going to take a listen to the second demo of some of the Kemper profiles that I made. Again, there's a link in the description for more info on those. Also, if you haven't, hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up button if you like this video. All right, until next time, I'll see you out there.